Arupe energetically embraces the message of the Second Vatican Council and the 31st General Congregation concerning the church in the world. He took the message from Rome. He went all over the world talking to Jesuits. He wanted to talk to Jesuits. But he, he was so personable, so knowledgeable, so convincing. It wasn't that he just made the vision credible. He made it infectious. That was the thing he had. He made it infectious. It's such a richness today in the world coming today to a new birth. We are in a very interesting moment of the history. Today we have a challenge that perhaps never had in society. You, you can uh, appreciate the tremendous dynamism in the church today. And that comes for the tremendous change, social change, uh, technological change in the world. We have to think about the tremendous problems of the world of today, illuminated by faith. That is very interesting. The people have so many new problems, but no answers. Well, we have to be very careful to see what are the changes in the world, because that will mean for us also change of the service. But not only that, because also we are in the middle of the world. Therefore, that supports for us a tremendous uh, responsibility to adapt uh, our spirituality to the real needs of today. We have to, to heal the poor or to help the third world, or we have to buy much more international in, in our activity. Christ is the redeemer of the whole man, even materially. Therefore, we have to see how to combine, how to integrate the salvation of the whole man. Today, what the world needs are people completely devoted, unselfish, working for the others. I would say the Jesuit should be men should be men of Amen and Alleluia. <laughs> amen is because to do always the will of God. And Alleluia, because making the will of God, they should be very happy. And that is, I think, the motto of the issue of today. Amen, Alleluia. I don't know. Very like? good. Very good. <laughs> Arupe's ideal of Amen and Alleluia applies not just to Jesuits, but to lay people as well. His desire to see men and women working for others continues to shape faith and justice initiatives today like the Jesuit Volunteer Corps and the Ignatian Volunteer Corps and programs individually tailored for Jesuit University and high school campuses and parishes, each pursuing in its own way the service of faith and the promotion of justice. This vision, which we can say is positive, will be transmitted externally to all. I think the messages of Father Arupe go hand in hand with social justice, with globalization, with women's rights, with development, with the defense of human rights, with universal brotherhood, etc. Also to the youth, to believe in the youth as well. The legacy of Pedro Arupe lives on, most particularly in the Jesuit Refugee Service, the one service organization he personally initiated on an international basis. JRS began in response to the plight of Vietnamese boat people in the 1970s and serves an ever-growing wave of refugees today that numbers more than 40 million around the world. Uh, he had come to an early conclusion, Arupe, that if we were going to be coherent uh, in our faith, we really had to promote justice. He'd seen injustice all over the world. He knew that the greater part of people in the world live in a state of utter poverty. And that, that poverty is, is eradicated in the systems. So he knew this, and, and he, he felt so strong. He was convinced that uh, if we're going to have a coherent, you know, one that's believable, apostolate and, and min a set of ministries, it has to include faith and justice. You have to change because the world is changing, and then comes the ongoing formation, which is not just to have 
two weeks of uh, theology, sometimes some book, some professor speaking of theology. No, no, it's much more than that. How to change the attitudes. A lot of people uh, are sort of uh, uneasy with these changes. Uh, oh, yeah. Wonder whether, wonder whether we've changed too much, gone too far. His faithfulness to that 31st General Congregation has been one of the points of friction uh, between Arupe and at least a small section of the society which went as far as uh, a request to the Pope to get kind of separation of part of the society of Jesus which would remain allegedly faithful to the old way of life. A disaffected group of European Jesuits were particularly unhappy about the new emphasis on social action and what they considered a downgrading of religious discipline and prayer. They proposed to the Vatican to break off from the Arupe-led society to become so-called discalced Jesuits. Paul VI was concerned about it and uh, made a, an inquiry uh, with the Spanish bishops because that was mainly in Spain, as a matter of fact. And uh, he, uh, he asked the Spanish bishops, uh, if I do accept that request, what happens, and so on. And I would say, thanks God, the Spanish bishops were wise enough to say that would be very dangerous for a father. Huh? But this would not be the end of it for Arupe. Those Spanish Jesuits had deep ties in the hierarchical maze of the Vatican and they would, in a sense, have the final word. Continuing to face resistance from some Jesuits who consider his emphasis on change and adaptation to be a personal agenda, Arupe determines to convene another general congregation to either ratify or modify his priorities. Arupe, not alone, but advised by very many, uh, ca came to the conclusion that uh, he would need to call a 32nd general congregation uh, to bring together the major uh, legislating body of the society to clarify a certain number of issues to give him the support he needed in order to put into practice the decisions made before. I am convinced that the society needs now a general congregation. It's a necessity. And I think it's no question for nobody in the society today to doubt about the long-lasting important matters uh, we have to deal with, difficult matters and pertaining to the whole society. Everything is new. And we ha they have there a challenge to, for us. We oblige us to go to the bottom of our spirituality. But uh, naturally, we have to stop and think and to reflect, to evaluate and to see whether uh, we are going in the right path. In 1975, the 32nd General Congregation issues the decree, Our Mission Today, the Service of Faith and the Promotion of Justice. The document is so hotly debated that it is not voted on until the last day of the meeting. When it finally passes with an overwhelming majority, it removes all doubts that Arupe is on the right track. And so one of the main things was uh, articulating and promulgating a mission statement for our Society of Jesus today that would be in line with our original documents. But boy, it was a long time and a very difficult road we had to pursue to come to this. Probably the best expression we had of our Jesuit mission is the service of faith. That's what we're there for. But that service of faith has to include a promotion of that justice in society, which is the embodiment of God's love and saving mercy.